frustrations of this process. Let's go, girl. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hear that So I bought my very first adventure bike in Norway and now I have to get it licensed for Australia. But how did I really end up with one of the most legendary motorcycles ever made? The war horse happened because I was halfway through my European content tour last year and anyway I knew I was rounding out the second half in Norway and I probably could have organised an 890, a T7, who knows? Like lent on the manufacturers again and I just thought now nah, you know what this is just too privileged I need to restore faith in the people I'm gonna go there and just buy a second-hand old bike and then ride it to the top of the world to the Arctic Circle anyway you saw all how all that went but I just got to Norway and I'm looking online there was three or four Africa twins um, and this one, the Warhorse in particular, was like 300 k's away from where I was staying. So, luckily, I have a brother-in-law who lives in Norway. He's a Norwegian resident. I couldn't just breeze into Norway, buy a bike and piss off. I had to actually uh, license it, or it had to be licensed to a Norwegian re resident. So, we jump in his car, completely took a punt, drove 300 k's to east of Oslo from Arendelle where we were staying and <laughs> man it wasn't the best looking bike I'll be honest I didn't know too much about them it's a 30 year old machine but anyway I get there and I went there as the mechanic and we were like schemingly buying it for my brother-in-law and I was the mechanic that was checking it over and the second I started this bike, even though it didn't look that good, it was a bit faded, bit of rust, missing stickers, that I yeah, the second I pushed the button and it fired up, I was like, my God, this is the one. You, you honestly don't feel some new motors purr as well as this thing was purring. And when I say new motors, like current models, couldn't believe how it felt. I thought, what? This thing's done nothing. But it had. It had done like 50,000 kilometers. And he told me the speedo had stopped working and he had to put a new cog in it and get it, get the odometer going again. So I don't really know how many Ks the Warhorse has done. Anyway, this was all within three days of me landing in Norway. Paid for it, bought it. Uh, it's mine. So. I got the bike and even to that point it was the warhorse was just a prop so I'm like starting the film project I'm literally a quarter of the way across Norway crossing the Swedish border and I was just totally 100% in love with the warhorse and I thought I'm never selling this bike ever and first film ran its course uh, all the way around to Nordcap, down to Lorfoten Islands, back to Arendelle. Right, I literally had a month left in Norway after that and I was racking my brain as to how I was going to do it. How am I going to get this thing back to Australia? And look, I'm raising a family, I've got two daughters, I can't just take off around the world. Um, and I was sort of looking at could I pull off in the last month could I try and ride it to Indonesia that would mean going through the Middle East and I've done that and it's pretty gnarly and do I really need to put myself in such a sketchy situation again I thought no I'm not doing that do I go through Russia around the top way down into India that way and it was just everything was gnarly so anyway what I did I follow this chick and she's a, she's a Polish Aussie chick who's traveling the world Kinga her name is and she has her own YouTube channel, Instagram, cool chick, funny, does all her stuff, just living the dream, right? Proper global adventure traveler. And I just messaged her and said, look, you must be a pro at motorcycle shipping now. How the hell do you do this? 
and she goes, oh, look, it's all a bit of a headache, as you know, COVID, all that, but give these people a try, and she gave me the contact or the website to bikesabroad.com. So I just sent him an email. Where's your actual main depot? Where's your Bikes Abroad depot? He said, well, the closest one to you is London. And I'm like, that's me. That's my next video. I'm gonna ride the old girl to London, hand it over to you guys, job done, fly back to Norway, get my family, fly home to Australia. And that's literally how it went. And then, yeah, just the other day, I went and picked her up, as you saw in the last video. So stage one, I've loaded it back up. I'm driving back to Perth to get an ADR inspection. The engineer is about to take the war horse around the back and go over it. Hmm. Jack, you're the engineer. I'm the engineer. You're going to deem the war horse worthy. So far, so good. The warhorse has passed the noise test easily with a reading of 86 decibels. But the engineer tells me there's another problem and the warhorse will not pass. <sighs> okay, the first setback. So one of the previous owners has put some stainless steel braided lines on the front brake, which is awesome because she stops. She's got powerful brakes but they don't have some sort of code that the Australian design rules require. Okay, here's the deal. I went and saw the mechanics which conveniently are just down the road and this is the mob that I'm booked in for like in half an hour, supposed to be getting the uh, vehicle inspection done. I went and saw them. They are really cool about it. They're like, yeah, mate, there's this mob um, in Welsh Pool. They should be able to make you up a set of brake lines on the spot. Uh, the frustrations of this process. I'm about to remove a perfectly good set of brake lines to get replaced, some with a number. Don't have any tools. Luckily, you got a shifter in the ute. Come on, baby. <laughs> Ooh. Poor old war horse. It's a bit stupid, it's like, I mean, those sorts of things are like aeroplanes. Yeah, exactly. All right, two zip ties and we're on. Cool. I'll go start having a look. Okay, one fairly new industrial strength Australian standard. DOT brake line. The old engineer ran out, inspected the new lines, and she's now ADR approved. I've just got to bleed her up so she can make it through the uh, vehicle inspection. Let's go, all horse. You need to pass this test. Woohoo! We have the first sign of fluid at the caliper. Go girl, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, that's coming and going. Oh, did you see that big? It sucked a heap down then. Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Not quite gonna pull a stoppy, but we're close. Wow, what a day. Got the brake split up. And um, with a bit of luck, the war horse is about to go through the final part of the inspection. There she goes. Look at old mate taking her down the road. He better not bin it. What do you think of the old girl, mate? Be honest. Nice. 
It is, isn't it? Nice for a 1992. Absolutely. I appreciate what you've done here today, mate. Oh, Getting her in last minute. No worries at all. A few hiccups, but you reckon she's going to get it across the line? Definitely. <laughs> I just don't believe it. She passed. Vehicle passed. One step closer to the war horse becoming an Australian citizen. Oh, what a relief. Now, there is one more thing I need to do while I'm in Perth, and that is go and see my old mate who's gonna do the welding on the custom acro. I've got the pipe, but we need to weld up the uh, the linking pipe pieces. Now, where is it? It's just down here and on the right. Unifab welding. This has got to be it. Okay, your work is done. Oh. All right. So I reckon we bang on. You happy with it? Yeah. Look at her. All right. Let's lock her in. You have to play it too. Okay, you got one crack at this, brother. One crack. Kropovich himself would be proud. <laughs> that's, up, that's after two bits. Yeah, that's after <laughs> two bits. Yeah, she's full purge if you go Full right purge. Here. The TIG specialist of so the world. So it should go faster now because oh, yeah. it got, won't hold the gases up. Let's go. Yeah. Having travelled over 10,000 kilometres together across Europe, I've come to know the war horse quite well. But today, I'm about to see a whole new side to her. That's the base. Clear that first deep pulse. That is a different animal. They did the most primo TIG welding that Akropovich himself would be proud of. And on that, I really want to thank Akropovich for custom building that uh, joiner and sending me across that muffler. Who knows what motorcycle it's off? It doesn't matter. It's a one-off signature build for the Warhorse, and my God, did you hear it? We can hear its Dakar heritage through that muffler, my God. I can't wait to ride it with that pipe. Now I can work on the restoration. I can strip it down. I want to go to town on it. I want to clean it up, get rid of all the rust, fix up anything that needs fixing, really restore her original identity, and then, we're hitting the outback big time. I can't wait. I'm pumped. Hit the subscribe button. Do all that stuff that YouTube wants you to do.